I have here two solutions. This is sodium hydroxide and this is copper sulfate. Both are clear solutions. The copper sulfate has a blue color to it. I'm going to mix these two solutions together and see what happens. Look at that. Beautiful darker blue. At the same time you see the solution is no longer clear and that is because a solid insoluble substance has formed. We call this the precipitate. Precipitation occurs when after mixing of two solutions a insoluble solid substance forms. Now let's try to find out what happened in the reaction. We started with two clear solutions. The first one was sodium hydroxide. The second one copper sulfate. And after mixing we found a cloudy darker blue solution. It was cloudy because it contained a precipitate. But what is this precipitate? The precipitate must be a new compound formed from the original compounds. The precipitate is also insoluble. So we have to look for an insoluble ionic compound. Intuitively we would expect that salts with a low solubility have the tendency to precipitate. But which salts are soluble and which ones are insoluble? The following table is very important. We see that compounds that contain alkali metal ions are compounds that are generally soluble in water. And so are compounds that contain the ammonium ion. In addition, nitrates, bicarbonates and chlorates are ionic compounds that are soluble in water. Halides, which are compounds that contain Co-, Br- or I-, are also soluble compounds. However, there are exceptions. When the halide anion combines with silver, mercury-2 or lead-2+, then the compound is insoluble. Sulfates are also soluble compounds, except when the sulfate anion combines with silver, calcium, strontium, barium, mercury-2, or lead 2 plus. On the other hand we find that carbonates, chromates, phosphates and sulfides are compounds that are insoluble in water. However there are exceptions again. When these anions combine with alkali metal ions or the ammonium ion then the compound is soluble. And finally hydroxides are compounds that are generally insoluble in water. However, when the hydroxide anion combines with an alkali metal ion or with the barium 2 plus ion, then the compound is soluble in water. Using the information from this table, we can now solve the precipitation problem. We started out with two solutions, sodium hydroxide and copper sulfate. Now let's try to find out what is the precipitate that is formed in this reaction. In order to do that, the first step we take is to identify all the ions that are present in solution. These two starting materials produce the following ions in solution. We have sodium ions, we have hydroxide anions, copper 2 plus ions and sulfate anions. The next step is to find out which salts we can form by combining these ions. Now remember, salts are neutral compounds obtained by combining a positive ion with a negative ion. We can make the following combinations. We find sodium hydroxide, sodium sulfate, copper hydroxide and copper sulfate. Now the first and the last one are actually the reactants. These are salts that are soluble. The two new salts which are sodium sulfate and copper hydroxide are the possible precipitates. But which one of these is the precipitate? We need more information. And this information can be obtained from the solubility table. In the solubility table we find that compounds that contain the alkali metal ion are generally soluble compounds. Now sodium sulfate contains a alkali metal ion, the sodium ion, so this compound is soluble. The precipitate therefore must be the other compound which is copper hydroxide. And indeed the solubility table says that hydroxides are generally insoluble compounds. We thus find the following reaction. Sodium hydroxide reacting with copper sulfate 
producing solid copper hydroxide and sodium sulfate. Of these two products, the precipitate is the solid copper hydroxide and sodium sulfate is still fully dissolved in solution. Let's look at another example. In this example, we combine two solutions once again. The first solution is silver nitrate. The second solution is potassium chloride. After mixing these two, we find a white precipitate. Let's try to find out what this precipitate is. And we proceed along the same lines. The first step is to identify all the ions in solution. These two starting materials produce the following ions. Silver ions, nitrate anions, potassium ions, and chlorine anions. The next step is to make combinations of these ions to form neutral salts. We find the following four possibilities. Silver nitrate, silver chloride, potassium nitrate, and potassium chloride. The first and last ones, once again, are the reactants. These are soluble salts. The two new possibilities are silver chloride and potassium nitrate. One of these could be the precipitate. But which one is it? Once again, we have to look at the solubility table. We find that potassium nitrate is most likely a soluble compound because it contains a alkali metal ion, and in addition, it contains a nitrate anion. Compounds formed from either one of these ions are generally soluble. So potassium nitrate is not the precipitate. The precipitate must be the other compound formed, and that is silver chloride. We thus find the following reaction. Silver nitrate reacting with potassium chloride, producing a solid compound, which is silver chloride and potassium nitrate. Of these two products, the precipitate is the solid, which is silver chloride, and potassium nitrate is still fully dissolved in solution.